Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com, live at the State Farm Center here in Champaign, Illinois, where Purdue has clinched the outright Big Ten championship with a 77-71 to win over Illinois, provided Illinois can't find a federal judge to overturn this outcome. I'm just kidding. I know I already used that, and I know that's going to make me public enemy number one here uh, before I get out of this town, but I couldn't resist. Um, thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel for your support. As always, if there was a Purdue Club Hotel in Champaign, Illinois, and why isn't there, um, that's where I'd be staying tonight. Alas, I will not. Um, so this is one of the most impressive Purdue wins I think I've covered in you know, 20-some years doing this. These are two great teams, great college basketball teams. Purdue is a great team. Illinois is a great team. These are two Final Four caliber teams. Um, and I've always said that... One clear reflection of a great team is when they win a big game that they don't have to win. I, I know that might sound like trolling to, to Purdue fans when I say Purdue didn't have to win this game, but Purdue didn't have to win this game. They'd already wrapped up at least a piece of the Big Ten championship. They were winning it outright regardless because they're not losing at home to Wisconsin on senior day. Illinois needed this game. Illinois is still was still playing for a piece of the Big Ten title, even though they would have needed Wisconsin to win at Purdue in the season finale, which isn't happening. But Illinois is also maybe on the fringe of a one seed uh, possibil uh, possibility. I, I haven't looked at all the various uh, bracketologies lately because I know where the team I cover is going to be, so it's kind of pointless. Um, Illinois needed this game. It was their senior night. It was... A venomous environment. It was a Super Bowl environment. It was um, real. There was a lot of animus here. Uh, animus is short for animosity. Um, anyway, uh, really impressive win by Purdue. Just uh, that's pretty much all I can all I can muster at this point. Um, trying to keep track of everything in my mind here. When you're sitting behind the coaches, and Painter will not sit down to let us see what's going on in front of us. I, he is so rude in that sense. Um, so I got a lot of stuff bouncing around in my head in terms of the recall of what exactly happened. Um, but you do not win a game like this without significant resolve, significant will, significant toughness. And Purdue showed all of those things and built some real momentum here going into the most important part of the season. So what I've always said, I changed my opinion years back on the Big Ten tournament. When you've got an opportunity to win a championship, win a championship. Uh, miles on your tires, be damned. These opportunities don't come very often. And winning a game like this, winning a championship in the Big Ten tournament at the end of the season, vaulting you into the NCAA tournament, I know it hasn't worked for Purdue here uh, when they've made these long uh, Big Ten tournament runs, but winning a game like this is just a – Seems like a really, really big deal for Purdue going into a situation where, uh, you know, obviously their season will be defined by what happens the rest of this month. But everything else that comes before that does matter and will not be stricken from the record and will not be a redundancy over whatever happens um, later this month. Uh, big time, big time win. As I said before, going through 20-some years of these games, uh, there have been some really big wins I've covered. Uh, from Purdue, this is up there. Uh, I don't want to say the best win. That would be dramatic overstatement, uh, reactionary overstatement, but it was a great win, maybe a top 10, top 15 sort of win uh, in my frame of reference with Purdue basketball. This uh, game was a wonderful, convenient microcosm. Yeah, sure. Um, of the many, many, many differences, profound differences between where Purdue is right now and where it was 12 months ago. Purdue won this game for a lot of reasons, but they were 8 of 10 from three-point range in the second half. I thought the game changed when Purdue went inside to Zach Eady on those two possessions to start the second half. Eady drew help, threw the ball back out. Braden Smith made a catch and shoot three. Fletcher Lawyer made a catch and shoot three. After that, it just felt like there was nothing Purdue could do that wouldn't work. And uh, I think that really changed the game. I'll have to go back and watch tomorrow to see how much trapping and how much doubling and how much help 
Illinois kept giving after those two threes. Uh, but I think that was a message sent by Purdue shooting. Shooters, uh, shooting doesn't send messages, shooters do. Um, that if you're going to sell out on 80, we can beat you. And we, this year we will beat you. And that's exactly what Purdue did. Uh, eight of ten from three in the second half was was just uh, you know a huge difference in this game, if not the difference in the game. While Purdue, or while Illinois went over from three in the second half, uh, I also think that one of those other profound differences from this year and last year, from last year to this year, I should say. Sorry, it's uh, a little late here. Um, it's just the fact that at the end of this game. Everyone on the floor wanted the ball. Mason Gillis wanted the ball, was not afraid to shoot. Lance Jones obviously made an enormous shot. Braden Smith made an enormous shot. Uh, Zach Eady obviously is used to having the ball in those situations. Fletcher Lawyer wanted the ball, wanted it in his hands. Four guys around Zach Eady who all want to make a play in a big situation. That is the exact opposite of where Purdue was in the NCAA tournament last year. It was Zach Eady and a bunch of guys who just didn't want to do anything. And that's why Purdue's season ended the way it did, in large part. Huge difference. This was a perfect summary of the differences between Purdue last year and Purdue this year. And Purdue last year um, wouldn't have gotten off some of those slippery slope moments in the first half, let alone probably gotten through those last couple of minutes. They wouldn't have gotten into a situation, most likely, where this would have come down through those last couple of minutes because... There were some real slippery slope moments, as I said, and me being able to say slippery slope this many times consecutively this late at night uh, on a day that I traveled and uh, on a day that I haven't slept as much as I want to because of that Michigan State game on Saturday um, uh, is a real feat. As much a feat as Purdue winning this game on the road against an elite team is me being able to say slippery slope this many times consecutively so yay for me yay for Purdue anyway what the hell was I even talking about um I don't think Purdue last year would have uh been as well equipped to weather some of those situations in the first half where Illinois is getting all those offensive rebounds that's the reason Illinois got out to a hot start once Purdue cleaned up the defensive glass um I I thought that was another thing that really changed this game but Last year, Purdue might not have had the resolve, might have had the will, might not have had the toughness. I keep bundling those three things together um, to not, you know, get boat raced in a situation where uh, a boat race very easily could have materialized. I think the first half, Purdue did an unbelievable job just hanging in there. I know that's not exciting. I know that's not something people think about necessarily when they watch games. But just surviving, just surviving the emotion, the energy that Illinois came out with, and just finding ways to stick around and stay in this game um, showed a lot of wherewithal. Uh, Another word I shouldn't be able to pronounce this tired. Uh, Showed a lot of wherewithal on Purdue's part. Um, That was a big story this game, just being able to hang in the game. They were down seven at one point. They never let it get past that, I don't think. Let me see here. I do have a box score. Uh, Largest lead. Uh, Hell, it doesn't matter. Uh, Whatever. Um, Purdue never let it get to a situation where now all of a sudden you have to change the way you play because you have to – you got to make up ground in a hurry. Uh, I I thought both the first halves and – the there's only one first half. Both the first half and the second half were both very reflective of the maturity – and the experience and the we've been there before factor um, that this Purdue team has. Very different ways, but both meaningly, equally meaningful, meaningly equal, I almost said. Uh, man, this is going off the rails here. Um, such a good game, such a bad video. Uh, it's a damn shame. Um, you know, uh, holding Illinois to 71 points, that was – Unbelievable, because Illinois had been putting up 80, 90 on everybody. Purdue had been putting up 80, 90 on everybody. This profiled as a game that was going to be 80 to 90 or 90 to 87 or something like that. I almost said 80 to 97. That wouldn't have made any sense. Um, Great job by Purdue. Uh, 
holding Illinois in check after those early offensive rebounds were cleaned up. Nine of their first 16 points for Illinois came on second chance opportunities. That was a big part of, as I said before, Illinois starting off well. Um, outside of that, when you take out that spell, Purdue was pretty damn good defensively. I know it maybe it didn't seem like it as Marcus Damask was just going to work and uh, um, being impossible to stop in the most <laughs> improbable ways possible. Um, as I said during the game, when he's 50 years old, he's going to be kicking the asses of every 25-year-old in the health club because he has got the game of, uh, as they say, an old man's game. I mean, he's just unstoppable. Uh, you know, Purdue had no really no answers for him. Um, until the end when Zach Eady, um formalized at least my vote for Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. I've been leaning that way all year long, uh, but this was the game that sealed it because I thought his presence around the rim at the end of the game, there was a play where he stood up Coleman Hawkins, busted up the whole Illinois possession, and then his help in their switching in the lane on Marcus Damask got Purdue stops. And again, I'll go back and watch it again tomorrow and break it down a little more, but that was Zach Eady as an elite defender too. Defensive rebounding is part of defense too, and it should count. And Eady is the best defensive rebounder in the Big Ten. That counts. So there you have it. Uh, you've heard it here first. Zach Eady has at least one Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year um, vote. So, uh, but just a, a really good job by Purdue defensively holding this team to 71 points. As I said, if you cut out the second chances, I know those happened, but if you cut those out, you normalize those numbers, you're looking at holding a team that's been scoring in the, in the 90s, in the 60s, uh, which is unbelievable and not really what you expect from a Purdue team that has had some ups and downs defensively is okay, is a good defensive team, but is not a great defensive team by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so good for Purdue there. Um, Everything else I have written down here, I think I've already, I've already talked about. I actually, I did actually prepare for this, believe it or not. Um, just a great win for Purdue. Um, you know, Purdue was already a num number one seed, probably the number one overall seed. Already had a share of the Big Ten title. Now Purdue has probably, almost certainly, locked up the number one overall seed in the tournament. I would not want to be who they play in the first round because they are going to be pissed when they have to play that team. Um, and uh, that's going to be a real problem for whoever plays them. Um, so just, uh, you know, I, obviously, as I said before, just one of the better wins I think I've seen ever at Purdue. Not a surprise from this team, which has always risen to the occasion for the most part. Three kind of fluky losses. I don't want to call them fluky necessarily, but they happen for a reason. They happen because of turnovers. And this was another example of you seeing how good Purdue is when they do not turn the ball over. Eight turnovers for the game against a defense that doesn't force a lot of turnovers, but in an environment that could really, really affect an opponent coming in here. This was one of the more profane, uh, energized environments I've seen on the road in the Big Ten in many, many years, and I've seen a lot of them. I've been to Bloomington many times. I've been here many times. I've been East Lansing many, many times. Um, this was a prison riot. Uh, I, I don't mean anything by that necessarily, but um, this was a prison riot and uh, really mean-spirited, really, really vitriolic. Probably not a word, but hopefully you know what I mean. Um, and Purdue won anyway. I, 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 it's what kind of – I kind of marvel at what athletes can do when people are yelling F you, F you, F you all the time at you and just – yelling random stuff and taking up every little skeleton in your closet when the team you're cheering for has very significant skeletons in its closets, no less, is a um, how they can just brush that off and perform the way they do. Zach Eady getting 28 points um, in this game uh, despite you know being the target he's been all season long in the Big Ten. Uh, I just marvel at what athletes can do in in that sense. Um, so good for them. That's what I got from the State Farm Center. I think we're going to get run out of here eventually, whether that's 11 or 12, I can't remember, but it happens to me every time I come here. Um, so please check out goldenblack.com. 
our website. I'll have lots of stuff on there from this game. And then into the NCAA tournament, we'll have a ton of coverage. Uh, I think it'd be worth your time, worth your money, hopefully, uh, for you to join us. Uh, I, I don't think you'd be disappointed. If you can sit through 15 minutes of this crap, chances are you're interested enough to be part of our site, to be a member of our community, to read our stuff. I am a better reader than I am a speaker, as this, did I say a better reader? A better writer than I am a speaker. So I'm just telling you, uh, you might want to go to goldenblack.com and join our site. It's uh, There's going to be lots of good stuff on there here in the next couple weeks. Um, so that's what I got uh, from the State Farm Center. This is Brian Newbert from goldenblack.com. Like and subscri subscribe. Smash that like button, as the kids like to say. And you know how hip I am with the kids. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And I will speak to you guys again uh, this weekend following Purdue Senior Day meeting with Wisconsin. Uh, I wouldn't want to be Wisconsin. Um, thank you once again also to the Premium Club Hotel. Uh, waiting on that champagne bureau to open up so that I can know where I'm staying every time I come here. Uh, we'll have to keep waiting. So thank you, everybody.